afternoon. My name is Lisa White. I'm the Health Promotion Manager and I just thought I'd come on this morning um, to talk about Winter Blues 101. And if you're living in Nova Scotia right now, especially around the Annapolis Valley, if you look outside right now, it might be easy <laughs> to feel a little bit of those winter blues. Uh, it's rainy, it's windy, it's cold. Um, so I just thought, you know what, I've got a little bit of information here. Maybe I'll just uh, pass it on to you on a Friday afternoon, especially if you're either heading out to lunch or coming back into lunch. Um, you know, winter time brings a time when it's fun. People like to get outside, people like to ski, people like to snowshoe, people like to go skating, play hockey. Um, there's a lot of outdoor activities that people like to do in the winter months. But there, there are some of us um, during the winter months who may you know, we may engage in some of those activities, but uh, we get those winter blues in the, in, the, in the winter months. And it can be periods of, of low times when you're not feeling all that great, when your emotions are a little bit low. Um, if, if you're someone who experiences low mood swings and feeling times when you're feeling low, then you're not alone. As, as the temperature gets drops, sometimes our mood drops as well, uh, and then you're not alone. So what are the winter blues? So the winter blues are a wave of emotions that come with these cold, dark days. If you're experiencing the winter blues, sometimes you may not be able to sleep very well. Uh, some people have to sleep longer during the winter months. They, some people indulge more in, in those comfort foods, um, spend more time on Netflix uh, instead of spending time with their, their friends and family. Some people tend to use substances more, some people will gain more, gamble more, drink more alcohol, whatever it might be, instead of um, engaging in some of the things that might be able to boost your mood uh, during the winter months. There is a difference between uh, the winter blues and um, seasonal affective disorder, so sometimes people get the two of those uh, confused. They can, some of the symptoms can go hand in hand. But the difference is, is about 15% of people in Canada experience the winter blues with only about 2-3% to of people in Canada who experience, they call it seasonal affective disorder or you can call it SAD. And SAD is a widely reached condition of regularly occurring depression in the winter seasons that can impair one's daily life. Treatment can include light therapy, counseling, medication, or a combination of the three. A professional can help determine if you are experiencing SAD. I have a lamp that I turn on. It might go really bright for a second. Um, it's called a SAD lamp. Maybe I'll leave it on. I don't know if the lighting is better with that on, but um, that is something that I use um, during the winter months. Some people have talked a little bit about salt rocks. I don't know if it's a myth or a fact when it comes to salt rocks, but I know I did receive one for Christmas, so I'm going to research it a little bit further and, and see if there's any value to, to using some of those things. Um, so if you're somebody, if you're experiencing some of the winter blues, here's some tips that I can give you uh, if you're somebody who's a little bit like me, who sometimes has those low days when you're not feeling like yourself, especially when it's darker, longer, lighter, less, getting cold. And, uh, you know, from about October till about May-ish, um, closer to June, we're not getting the same amount of vitamin D that we typically would get between June, you know, June, July, August, September time, right? So um, that could be something that could aid in the low, you feeling a little bit low or a little bit fatigued in the winter months, right? And that's something that we'll talk a little bit about in a second. So... If you've been tuning into our uh, health promotion face Facebook page in the last couple of months, you've probably seen a lot of information on mental health, a lot of information on Bell Let's Talk. Um, Edith or Jeanette and I just did a uh, intercom uh, part one and two series on communicating effectively in your personal relationships. And that is actually a piece of tips, things that you can do to maintain your mood in the winter is that proper communication with your friends and family members and your coworkers and even your supervisors, right? Because if you're not feeling all that great and you need some support, it's being able to communicate with the people around you that care about you, who know you, that can maybe provide some support to you during that time. So we did do a part one and part two uh, table talk on that. We just finished recording um, substance uh, use 
uh, 101. So we did a little bit on gaming and gambling and a little bit of information on alcohol and cannabis that uh, Jeanette's working on right now that we'll be putting out probably sometime uh, during next week. So we're getting out some information. So that's part of it. You know, if you're trying to maintain your mood is finding out some of those things. Where are the resources? Where is, where's the information that I can access that may be able to help me with uh, improving my, my mood? Another place you can start is tracking. So tracking your mood and tracking when you're feeling down, what's going on around you, like what time of the day it is. Um, have you had anything to eat at all? Um, where are you? Um, are you alone? Do you have friends and family with you? What are you thinking about? Um, what's it like outside? Um, what's your activity like? What's your activity level been like lately? What's your diet? Like what have you been consuming? How are you sleeping? So when your mood is low, you want to take, you want to sort of take a little bit of a, an inventory check to see where you are as far as your, your mental health. You're looking at your physical health. You're looking at the, the, the support systems around you that you have and take a little bit of an inventory so that you can type, try to figure out where to start when it, when it comes to improving your mood. So let the light in. Get outside. I know I, I feel like a broken record, but letting some of the light in, getting out during your day uh, to get some fresh air, uh, if you can, get some, let the light in, open up your blinds, open, I know sometimes I did have my windows open yesterday, so if you can open up your windows, yes, that yesterday was really nice out, so I opened up my windows for a little while, and let some of the air come through the house a little bit, you know, turn down the oil, let, let in the fresh air, open up, open up the drapes. Let some light in, let the sun in, you know, get outside, get some fresh air and let some of the light into your life. A little bit of daylight, it does, it is an indicator that it could help boost your mood a little bit by just getting out and getting some daylight into you. Get physical. So um, start moving a little bit. It's been a couple of years where even I, like I've been working remotely uh, since well, I went on to Christmas and then I started working remotely when we came back from Christmas. I've been working remote, remotely and in my office at work in the gym, I have a stand up computer and I'm usually walking back and forth in and out of the office. So I'm actually exercising and, and standing and, and being more active just in my own workplace, right? In the winter time, I know for some people, they feel like it's hard to get active because their motivation to get outside is not there because they're typically people who like to exercise in the spring and the summertime. We have people who love the winter. This is like the best time right now. There's lots of snow. Let's get out. Let's snowshoe. Let's go sliding and tobogganing. Let's walk in the woods. Let's do those. Let's go skiing. Let's go cross country skiing. Let's go snowshoeing. Let's go skidooing. Let's go four wheeling. Let's get out with our friends. Let's build a snowman, whatever. There's some people who like to do that in the winter. So getting out and doing some of those things that you enjoy doing uh, in the winter months, any way that in which you can get moving, right? I've been walking every single day. I find that's the best thing for me in the winter months is to get outside and get walking. It, it seems to really help if you're out in the fresh air, out in the elements, out with nature, that sort of thing. And people and traffic and stuff like that. Like if, when I'm walking through Greenwood, I know it's not a metropolis, like some of the places where uh, you might be living, but it's nice to be out in my community and, and seeing people going by that I recognize, friends that I know, co-workers, people in the community that I can see. It's nice just to get out in your community and see other people. You could be somebody who's not working remotely from home and you feel those, those winter blues. So if you're, if you're working full time and you're, you're busy, you have a busy schedule and you're going to work in the dark, you're coming home in the dark, any opportunities in your workplace where you can open up a window or get yourself outside and get some fresh air is really important that you try to do that. Also, if you're, you're struggling in the dark and you're working in dark places, you want to keep an under, you want to keep an eye on your vitamin D level. So one of the things you might want to do is contact your pharmacist and talk to your medical doctor, your medical officers or your doctors. Uh, talk to your mental health professionals too as well. But let, get an understanding after you've taken your inventory and you're figuring out, geez, I've got these um these winter blues. Talk to some of those people in your community, like the pharmacist. Start there. There may be things that you can do. There may be tips that you can do um, that can help you with with your mood uh, just by talking to the pharmacist and then reaching out to your medical officer. Because you might, you might be somebody who is lacking in vitamin D. Both Kenny and I lack in vitamin D, so uh, we need to take a vitamin D supplement throughout the winter months, and we go to the pharmacy, and we talk to the pharmacist. 
and get a recommendation on what we can be taking. So that's one of the things you can do. Some, some people have told us, um, pharmacists have told us, um, upping your vitamin C intake too as well during the winter months. Uh, it is a time where people tend to sometimes get colds and flus and things like that. So upping your, your vitamin C intake, whether you're doing it through food or whether you're somebody who has to take a supplement, that sometimes is a suggestion um, from other people uh, that you can uh, let some, uh, get some vitamin C. And you know, I did talk about getting move, moving. So when, if you are going to start getting moving, moving, just start low and then build from that, right? Um, if you're part of, if you're a military member at 14 Wing, talk to your fitness staff. Uh, they can be able to help guide you if you need a, a, a physical training program. Also contact, you know, if you have family, you can contact uh, recreation. And Jill Jackson has a wide range of uh, recreational activities that she's promoting during the winter months that you can get your family and friends out to. Uh, I know that it's take the roof off winter. I've seen things with, with evening uh, uh, skiing and snowshoeing. You can also contact your uh, the Greenwood Military Family Resource Center because they may have some uh, things that are going on that you can tap into for your families to get yourself uh, feeling a little bit better. Try to get normal uh, sleep schedule. So it might you it might feel like your bed is the only one who understands this funk you're in, but oversleeping can actually worsen the symptoms of the winter blues. So getting enough sleep but not getting too much sleep, like being fatigued, and and that can be that be part of your diet too as well if you're feeling too fatigued uh your low uh, low mood and things like that could also have an your diet and your physical activity could also have an impact on that too right and sleeping too long and, and being having too much screen time and and watching too much tv and things like that and being sedentary right give yourself a pat on the back um battling low mood swings is not easy feat uh, it's important to be kind to yourself uh, you're stronger than you think um, remember to have regular check-ins with yourself and, and ask other people to check in with you. So sometimes we get a little desensitized to ourselves. So ask other people to check in with you too, as well, and ask other people how they perceive you're doing, right? Cause sometimes how we perceive that we're doing is not the same as how somebody else is looking at us. Jeanette and I just finished doing a, uh, basic mil military training, uh, some briefings over in Aldershot and, um, just by looking at some of the the recruits that are were in the audience um, we could pinpoint just by looking to, through some of their eyes i mean they all had masks on uh, we could see that there was some people that may not have been been doing all that great and that little simple check-in with that individual to see if they're doing okay and, and sometimes that's when the people need that little bit of a check-in uh, to see how you're doing just it just tells the individual that you care about them right and, and, and we, we checked in with a lot of them and they said, you know, thanks for checking in. Thanks for letting me talk to you for a little bit. It just felt good to feel that people were taking care of us, right? So not only do we have to take care of ourselves, uh, it's nice to take care of other people and, and check in with other people. And this is just, this is not um, counseling or therapy or anything like that. This, this information I'm providing to you, it's just, a, it's just information and education. It's not advice or professional advice. I am a health promotion manager. I facilitate education, information, and awareness. So I'm just giving you some educational tips today. If you want to get more professional advice, that's where you want to reach out to some resources and the professionals in the field, right? And I'll give you those resources at the end. A couple of more tips I'll give you before I leave you for the afternoon. These are things that I wrote down that either I've tried or other people have told me that they've tried during the winter winter months that have helped them boost their mood a little bit. Crafts, right? So getting out to uh, one of the stores that's that might be cheaper. I don't want to promote other stores on there, but we've got some local stores that you can go out to that you can. It's really cost effective. You can go in and get a, a, a bunch of crafts and, and schedule in some craft time for yourself and your family members. Uh, getting some color in there and, and, and doing some of those crafts, putting them around your house, putting them outside if you want to, um, decorating your, your front porch with some colorful crafts. I know that during uh, COVID-19, people started putting rocks around the community, um, colored rocks and things like that, which were, which were great for people to see it. So it's a way to connect. I've also gone on walks around the community and seen people who have made birdhouses and put them in the woods, woods along paths. So this year, 
I might be feeling my age, but what has helped me is um, we put some bird feeders outside in the front yard. So we have a bird house, a couple of bird feeders, and it's just nice to be able to watch the birds going in and out of the bird feeders and having some some nature a little bit closer to home. And, and the fact that I, you know, we, we built the, the bird house and we painted it and it didn't cost us a lot of money. We just went to a local store that supplied, you know, cheap supplies and we went in and we picked it up and, and we put it outside and we got some bird seed and it, it's kind of neat, right? Some coloring books. I have a, an attention span that's not that great. So I buy the children's coloring books and I like to color in those, but there's those adult coloring books out there. But this is, you know, friends and family. So for family members and kids, getting some coloring books and coloring in your coloring books and making a collage and, and putting the those on the fridge and putting them on your wall and things like, or having a wall dedicated. I don't want um, people to start sticking tacks in their wall and I'm in trouble, but putting them in a space where it's accepted and, and getting those pictures and stuff out there. Journaling is another thing. And journaling will also help you with your tracking. So if you're journaling down like today, I'm not feeling all that great. And the reason is it's raining, it's, it's windy outside. Um, there's nobody home. I'm by myself, I'm alone. Um, and I haven't had anything to eat yet, or I haven't been physically active lately. I haven't talked to my friends and family. I haven't been journaling or haven't been, I haven't been exercising. So those, those check-ins that journaling helps you keep track, but it can also help you get your feelings out right if you, if you feel like you're uncomfortable talking to somebody about it then write them down get your feelings out on paper it's personal for you you can write down you can talk to yourself that's positive self-talk write how you're feeling out and try to positively talk to yourself when you're journaling a little bit that can certainly help you feel better we're very good at talking negatively about ourselves so if you can write down some positive things about yourself and talk to yourself a little more positively, that could be something good for you to do. Try out a new recipe. So um, grab a recipe. There's lots of places you can find a recipe uh, with your friends and your family and uh, try a new recipe out and see what, see what you think. You can also try out your new recipe by letting a family member or a friend know they go get the ingredients and then you can you can Facebook lie or face FaceTime each other or message each other and, and cook those ingredients together in your home and then try them and see how it turns out. Meditation can also help. It can help relax the mind. It can help uh, uh, let go of all the daily things that you're thinking about and give your mind a chance to rest and recover. Listen to some music or listen to nature sounds if that helps you feel better. I've already mentioned talking to your doctor, talking to your family and friends, again, talking to um, your chain of command. So if you're a military member and you feel like some of the strategies that I've given to you are not working and you need some more support, that's when you might want to reach out to more resources. So whether you need to talk to your chain of command, whether you need to talk to a manager, um, reach out to those resources. There's a few resources I'll give to you from here. One of them says if uh, there's one for if somebody is having suicidal thoughts, okay, that if you're having suicidal thoughts or need immediate help, you can call 1-833-456-4566 toll free. In Quebec, it's 1-866-277-3533. Or you can visit 24-7 www.crisisservicescanada.ca. If you are, if I can get this out here, if you're military members, okay, I might even have it here actually. If you're a military member or part of the defense team, another number you can call is CAFMAP, okay, Canadian Armed Forces Members Assistance Program. It used to be called CIFMAP, but we call it CAFMAP now. And that number is 1-800-268-7708. And for EAP employees, for uh, employees of uh, D&D, you can also call CAFMAP. So if you're a public servant, you call the same number. Your number is the same as CAFMAP. If you are a NPF employee or peace employee like myself, you can call 1-800-387-4765. Now that's just a couple to name a few. There's a lot of different resources out there. If you feel like 
your mood is not changing and you're feeling worse and it's not just uh, a feeling low that there's there's more to it that if you feel that it's becoming um a, a burden an impact on your your health and overall well-being if you feel like things are getting you know aspiring a little bit for yourself then um it's always good to reach out to those resources to have a check-in right um, it's it's okay to have those periods of highs and lows. It's when the lows are not not coming back and you're not re recovering from that, right? Where you might want to reach out to those more formal resources. Well, it's 1.10 here. I am going to sign out. I just wanted to come on and, and talk to you a little bit about what's going on uh, over the winter winter blues. And a lot of people have, mentioning, uh, have been mentioning that to us lately. Um, upcoming though, uh, next... On the 23rd of February, if you're at 14 Wing, there is a town hall at 0900, so check out your uh, emails to, to be able to tap into the town hall that's coming out on the 23rd. Keep an eye on your PSP Facebook page, uh, Fitness and Sports has got stuff going on over there. Check out your uh, recreational page, because they got stuff going on there too over in recreation, MFRC. Uh, again, the Wing Commander posting a lot of information in the COVID community network. Our 14 Wing Health Promotion page has got some stuff. Our CFMW YouTube channel has stuff going on, lots of stuff from across the country. Not just my mug, but you're seeing health promotion managers and specialists from Comox all the way across the whole country uh, who have been providing to you fitness and sports and recreation and health promotion webinars for the last two years. So there's an abundance of information that you'd be able to find there. Nutrition Month. I would not live it down if I did not mention to you that uh, upcoming in March is Nutrition Month. And um, in, in March, we're hoping that we can um, get back to in-person delivery of our programs. We'll find out more, I hope, on the, at the Town Hall on the 23rd of February. But the idea is to get back in the classroom. So Nutrition Month is upcoming in March, and Jeanette has got and Edith have been working on that, and Jeanette has got a wide range of things that are happening in March. She's got some great ideas coming up, so stay tuned to our Facebook page uh, for some videos and posts and some interviews of uh, military members that are coming up. She's got Top Fuel for Top Performance coming up in the second week. She's got, oh, she's just been working hard. She's got some great things coming out, and Edith has been helping her on that. They've been working together, so take a look keep an eye on our 14 week health promotion facebook page for more uh, information on nutrition month Blah. nutrition month and i'm going to leave you i want i hope you uh, maybe took a couple of things away from this i hope you have a great weekend take care of yourselves out there and if you ever have any questions please feel free to reach out to me you can reach me at white.lisa at cfmws.com have a great weekend, everybody, and uh, look forward to or look forward to seeing you all back in the classroom soon. Have a great day. Bye.